Whoa, that was a close call. Heads up! to tell you about Daniel's faithfulness and trust in God. So last week we talked about how a long time ago, Jerusalem was conquered by the Persian army. <laughs> Young Hebrew men, including Daniel, were taken back to Babylon to be taught in the Persian ways and trained to work for the king. Well, even though Daniel was taken against his will and had to go through some super hard stuff, he knew that God was with him, and God made it possible for Daniel to grow in wisdom and ability. And Daniel praised God and trusted in his plan. God allowed Daniel to work his way up to being one of the most powerful men in the kingdom. He became one of three supervisors. Three. One, two, three, four. Three, no, no, just, just three. Just, ah, pause. <laughs> anyway, Daniel was in charge of 120 satraps. Satraps, satraps, satraps. <laughs> That's a funny word. Satraps were like governors in the kingdom. Now because Daniel was trustworthy and wise, he became a favorite of King Darius, who was the king of Babylon at the time. The king decided to promote Daniel over all the other satraps in the entire kingdom. And that didn't go over so well. Mm -mm. So stay tuned, because this true story has some plotting, powerful plotting by jealous men, faithful praying from a believing heart, a tricked king who was powerless to change even his own laws, and roaring lions that become as gentle as sleepy kittens. So, it's time to enter the lion's den! King Darius was the king of Persia a long time ago, and because Persia was so big, he needed help to lead his kingdom. So he picked three guys to help him lead. One of those men was Daniel. Daniel was really good at his job. Eventually, he did such a good job that King Darius put Daniel in charge of the whole kingdom. Now this made the other two leaders really jealous and really mad. They wanted Daniel out of the way so that they could be important again. Now, in Daniel's time, it was normal for powerful people to be corrupt, to cheat those around them and look out only for themselves. But Daniel was different. The Bible says he was exceptional. He told the truth and stood up for what was right, even when it was dangerous for him. Daniel was a really good guy. So even though Daniel's enemies tried to catch him doing something wrong, they couldn't. But they could catch him doing something he did every single day. Every day, three times a day, Daniel opened his windows wide and prayed to God, no matter what. So Daniel's enemies had an idea. They went to King Darius and said, You know, no one should be praying to anyone but you. And if they do, they should be thrown in a den of lions. Now, give the order. Then it can't be changed and King Darius made the decree. Now, Daniel knew about this. He knew what would happen if he continued to pray to God instead of the king. So what did he do? He did what he always did. He went home, opened his windows, got on his knees, and prayed. But he didn't pray to Darius. He prayed to God. Of course, his enemies were watching for him to do this, and as soon as he did, they went to the king. Then they said, Ah, King Darius, didn't you make an order that no one could pray to anyone but you? 
And if they did, they'd be thrown to the lions. I did. It's a law. It can't be changed by anyone. Then they said, Well, Daniel still prays to God three times a day. King Darius was really upset. He didn't want to punish Daniel. They were friends. He didn't want to throw Daniel in a den of lions. He tried all day to find a way around it, but even the king couldn't rescue Daniel. A king's decision was final. It couldn't be changed. So Daniel was put in a den with the lions with a heavy stone sealing the entrance. And the king said, May your God, whom you serve so faithfully, rescue you. Even King Darius wasn't able to change his decree because even a powerful king like Darius wasn't all powerful. He was still a human king who could be tricked, and he was. Maybe this is why Daniel only wanted to pray to God. God can't be tricked or messed with or undermined. There is no limit to God's power. That's the God that Daniel wanted to worship, and that's the God we worship today. He hasn't changed. He's still good and holy and worth our worship. Now, because God is so good, even though Daniel spent a night with lions who could have torn him limb from limb, the Bible says that God shut the mouths of the lions. When the king came back in the morning, there wasn't a scratch on Daniel. Now, those other two guys who tried to get Daniel in trouble, they didn't do so well with the lions. The king ordered them to be arrested and thrown in with the lions, and before they even hit the bottom of the den, the lions attacked them, and the lions crushed all their bones. Yikes. After this, King Darius gave another order. Everyone should worship Daniel's God. He said, He sets people free and saves them. He does miraculous signs and wonders. He does them in the heavens and on the earth. He has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. This wouldn't be the last time that someone who loved God took a punishment they didn't deserve and did it willingly. And it wouldn't be the last time that a heavy stone was taken away to reveal that someone who should have been dead was alive. And I can't wait for you to hear that story. Now that was a close call. Imagine having a sleepover with a lion. Um, no thank you. <sighs> Yet there Daniel was face to face with wild lions who were probably in the mood for a little snacky snack. But did the lions eat Daniel? Uh -uh. No way. God protected and took care of Daniel. We can trust God to take care of us. Go ahead, say it with me, because it's true. We can trust God to take care of us. Now, Daniel was a Hebrew man who became a top governor in the kingdom of Babylon. He was faithful to God, and he believed that God would be faithful to him. All Daniel needed to do was obey God and trust God to take care of everything else. Now, as part of his relationship with God, Daniel chose to pray at three specific times during the day, every single day. And the other governors knew that Daniel had this routine. And because they were jealous of how much King Darius liked Daniel, they came up with a terrible plan to get rid of Daniel once and for all. Listen to this. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius! We are all in agreement, we administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors, that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, 
<laughs> your majesty, issue and sign this law so it cannot be changed. An official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. They tricked King Darius with a decree in place that not even the king himself could change. Anytime Daniel prayed to the one true God, he would now be breaking the law. So I guess Daniel must have given in and only prayed to King Darius for 30 days to avoid the punishment, right? Uh-uh, no way, never. That was not going to happen. God tells us to worship no other gods or idols, only him. And Daniel loved God, so he wasn't going to stop. Daniel kept right on praying to his God, our God, the one true God of Israel. He didn't even try to hide it either. Every day, three times a day, you know what Daniel would do? He would open his window that looked towards Jerusalem, the place that was once his home, and he would pray to God. Now, the jealous governors caught Daniel breaking the law and told the king. And man, King Darius was really upset because he didn't want to punish his favorite leader. But there was nothing he could do except to throw Daniel into the den of lions. And that's what he did. And he threw Daniel into the den of lions and the entrance was sealed with a stone. And King Darius, he wouldn't eat, he couldn't sleep all night because he was so worried about Daniel. So early the next morning, King Darius rushed to the den of lions to see what had become of Daniel. And the stone was removed and this is what happened. You can read it right here in the book of Daniel chapter six. When he got there, he called out in anguish, Daniel, servant of the living God, was your God whom you serve so faithfully able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, long live the king. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouths so that they would not hurt me, for I have been found innocent in his sight and I have not wronged you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and ordered that Daniel be lifted from the den. Not a scratch was found on him, for he had trusted in his God. That's Daniel 6, 20 through 23. Oh, wow, that is so incredible. It, it was a miracle. God saved Daniel. We can trust God to take care of us. Daniel, he hadn't been harmed, not even a little tiny scratch, and he was in a den of lions. God showed them that he is real and all powerful. And you know what? King Darius recognized that the God who Daniel worshiped is the real living God who delivers and rescues. King Darius was so amazed that he told the whole kingdom and all the nations about God's incredible faithfulness. I love that. You know what? Like Daniel, we're all faced with choices every day. Like, will I worship God in front of other people? Will I obey God? Will I tell these people about what Jesus did for us? Will I pray out loud? Will I love God even if other people don't? Sometimes it might feel scary to worship or obey God or to do the right thing, but we should always do what God wants us to do. Remember, we can trust God to take care of us. Daniel wasn't always perfect his entire life. I mean, none of us are, right? But in this moment where he could have chosen to stop worshiping and praying to God, Daniel chose to keep loving God and trusted that no matter what would happen, God would take care of him. And boy, was God faithful to Daniel. He totally was, he saved him. Now, I don't know what you're scared of, 
maybe you are kind of embarrassed to sing and dance for God when you're around other people, or you're worried what your friends will think when you choose not to play a certain game because you know God doesn't want you to play that game. Or maybe you're scared to pray over your food at lunchtime because other people around you aren't doing that. Or maybe you're nervous to share Jesus with others because you're not sure you're gonna know the right thing to say. Well, let me tell you guys something. I used to be scared of all of those things. I did. But then I chose to love God with my life and not let fear get in the way of my relationship with God. I chose to trust God. And you know what? He took care of me and he still does. We can trust God to take care of us. So trust God, sing and dance until you can't sing and dance anymore. Tell people anything and every little thing that you know about Jesus. Pray out loud as often as you think about it and obey his commands even if no one around you is. Go into the world and love God really, really well in great big ways. Does God deserve it? Yes, 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 he does. So let's go and do those things.